So today we're going to show you how to rebuild and, and fix a Case Ingersoll mower decks. This is a right hand discharge deck off an Ingersoll 4 digit series, a 3000, 4000 series tractor. The principles are similar with the left hand discharge, but there are some big differences. Mainly how the pulleys and spindles are, are held together and come apart. On these newer series, the pulleys are all welded right to the spindles. They come out from the top pretty quick and easy. The older series, the pulleys are keyed on and the spindles drop from the bottom and the pulleys can be a bear on the other ones to, to take off sometimes. And uh, we'll do a video on those because they're quite different sometimes if they fight. Um, but the principles are similar. So this I think is an RM48 deck for a customer we're gonna be doing a rebuild on. The, the idler pulley is all messed up. The whole idler system is missing the spring. Um, it's all worn out. So we got new brackets and, and whatnot. And then we're gonna replace the bearings on this one as well. We'll also be replacing the blades. But the first step to taking this deck apart is you gotta pull the blades off. An impact gun makes this job a lot easier, but you can do it with a wrench or a hand ratchet. You just gotta lock the blades, wedge a, a piece of wood in between them so they don't spin. Uh, but with the impact gun, you usually don't have that problem where you can kind of hold on to them. Be mindful of which blade came off where, because depending on the size of your deck, you may have two different size blades. Show you two. This one, I don't know if you can see it. The down movement. So this, this center spindle's got some issues for sure. Uh, it could be a worn blade adapter, worn blade. The holes can be stripped out and it's not threading down. That's very dangerous. As fast as he's going around, that could really do some damage to somebody or, or come off and hurt somebody or the machine. There should be no movement when these things are tight at all. This one's got a little bit here. This feels more like a bearing play. Sounds like it. This one, this one is something's worn or not right. You're gonna also want to remember how things come apart. Sometimes there's spacers and, and whatnot in here. So these are dust shields. You're going to want to reuse these unless they're destroyed or rotted. This is a bunch of stuff in there, but this is what they call the blade adapter. So this lock, your spindle goes in here and locks into your spindle. And then this part goes into your blade and that's what drives your blade. So it's not splined or keyed. It uses this as, as the drive. Alright, and then these are your hubs. These are good cast hubs. These are probably replaced, not original ones. A lot of these Ingersolls had a pop metal aluminum looking kind of hub that they're just kind of rot and fall apart. If you go to work on them, they just crack and disintegrate, but these cast hubs are what you want. If you're planning on doing a deck rebuild and you don't have these cast hubs, I'd suggest buying them uh, new or used. The used ones are fine too most of the time. And uh, replacing your, your pop metal ones with these, you'll be glad you did. And these will get a lot of service out of these. Used, you can find them 50 to 70 bucks. I think new, they're somewhere between 110 and 130. This blade adapter doesn't want to come out. It should kind of fall out of there pretty easy. Bale and twine, all kinds of stuff gets in there and destroys the bearings and destroys everything around. So we probably should have done first, but make sure your belt's removed. You probably can get away with it, but it makes the job easier. Make sure your belt is just off. So it's not fighting there, your tensioner pulleys and all that stuff. And before anybody cries about the cart, we bought it from the scrapyard. Home Depot got rid of it, it needed casters or something. We got it from the scrapyard. It's not stolen, but it's handy as hell. So, like we said, the, these all come out one piece from the top. Make sure you got clearance underneath. 
what I usually do is I'll thread the bolt in a little bit. I'll spray a little, little penetrating oil or whatever you got. And now you're going to re-thread the bolt in so you don't damage the spindles if you're going to reuse them. And they should drop pretty easy. See that one already went down? So it'll probably come out pretty handy. And then do the same thing. I guess you got to make sure underneath you got your clearance. And these will go the rest of the way. Just give it a push usually sometimes you might have to help it out the rest of the way that's it that's how they should come out doesn't mean they always do like I said the pulleys are welded on here so if your pulley is shot you're kind of out of luck you got to buy the whole spindle um, it's not all that bad here we got a spacer on here so you got to remember to put that back on and make sure it's on there and pay attention nothing else fell and dropped sometimes there's some spacers up above um, and the two outer ones should be always the same, but I always like to put them back in the same spot. The center one is different. It's got more pulleys on it. So this was the center spindle. As we said, we got two pulleys to it. It's a longer spindle. This one, the bearing, bearing's definitely shot. Should have no movement in bearing like that at all. Totally shot and it's froze itself to this. It came out when we knocked the shaft down through the top of bottom So this should, should be pulled off if you're gonna reuse your spindle I got a new spindle because I wasn't trusting this this one from the movement we had I didn't want to mess around thought it was wobbled out here and uh, it's definitely not brand new here So if you look you can see it's worn a little crooked here. There's more meat on one side than the other So we're gonna replace this Clean up around these bolts and the threads. Make sure there's nothing there. Look at them good. Make sure they're not peened over or mushroomed or damaged from anything getting hit up in there. And then spray them down with some good penetrating oil. This is actually first time using this WD-40 Specials Penetrant. We'll see how it is. There's okay penetrating oils out there. There's a couple good ones, very few real awesome ones, but uh, this will walk by it, want to try it, I do see people using it. You let that sit, the more you do that, the longer you let it sit, do it a couple times, the better off you are. And these are the bolts to take those hubs off, and they're 9 sixteenths as well. Sometimes it comes, they come off real nice, sometimes they don't come off nice. Very often on the older decks, or decks that have been uh, neglected on maintenance, the bolts will actually snap in the hubs. So you got to drill them out, re-tap them, or put threaded inserts in there, or you get a new hub. And then the left-hand deck, the... Uh, Bolts actually breaking the blades too that actually hold the blades on they're held on to a different different style so we'll do a video on that remember there's lock lock washers under these two as well we lucked out all of those came out beautiful like I mentioned this was also a big part of the issue why this deck's getting worked on you can see all the play in there so there's a lot wrong here I'm thinking this brackets worn this bolt could be worn it's loose there was no spring on here uh, pulleys could have some play though even though it looks like somebody replaced the pulley trying to fix the problem but it wasn't just the problem the other bearing in the pulley was probably shot because this wasn't set up right usually that's a carriage bolt on that Sometimes there, you'll find them be a, a welded, welded stud that someone's welded on there, or a regular bolt. Somebody's replaced it, and the uh, square is worn out. 
So now, kind of the same same thing as we did with knocking knocking the spindles out, except we're doing it from the top going down. We're knocking those hubs out, those cast hubs we were talking about. We definitely don't want to damage those. Like I said, they're not super cheap. There's a few different ways to do it, um, depending on how hard they're going to fight. Again, it doesn't hurt to spray some penetrating kind of metal. You want to clean up a garbage right around here. This is the hub. It's going to go through. And we'll see how easy or hard these come out. Not going to want to cooperate real well. So you want to use something that rides up on the casting and not just on the bearing. This is for a shop press. That's basically what you want to do. You can use a block of wood or whatever you got to do so you don't be, you don't want to mushroom this up because then it's not going to fall through that hole real well. There are times we've had to use something with an air hammer to get these out on the older decks. Um, once or twice we've had to put them in a shop press usually you can bang them out but if the thing's 40 years old and never been touched you can have a disaster on your hands again we're not we're replacing the bearings so it doesn't matter if we damage the bearings you know you want to use safety glasses and all that good stuff again these are the good cast hubs the grease fittings, we'll show you why it's, they're not necessarily very important on these. We'll show you that in a minute. The hubs should be all the same, but we still like to put them back where we got them. And this center one sometimes can fight a bit. For whatever reason, but all the, all the force and driving all the blades and stuff tend to be on it. And stuff tends to puddle up under the center one the most. So now we're going to knock the bearings in, out of the hub and replace the bearings. So there should be a spacer in here. It's basically like a piece of, a piece of pipe. Um, it, it moves around in there. It lets you basically not over overload the bearings or preload them. There's snap rings that hold these bearings in. So they have to be knocked out from the opposite side. So the bottom one you knock out from the top and then vice versa. You just move that spacer a little bit to the side and get a punch or a chisel or whatever you're using. On the bearing you may have to hit it a few times do it opposite so if you're going to start over at three o'clock and do it at nine and then go to twelve and six if you need to hit it more than twice there goes the bearing the spacer did not fall yet so that's all right i'll show you there it is so there's that spacer it has to go back in there so what I wanted to show you was that there's a little bit of grease in here, not a lot. The grease does nothing because these are sealed bearings. So if you want to be able to have the grease do something and you're going to grease it, all you do is just take out this slip on the bearing. The seal, if you've got a rubber seal, if you've got a steel seal or a metal seal, you're in trouble then. But you just pull this out. And then leave it out on the, on the inside, so the t so it's facing the inside. When you pump this thing full of grease, then it'll finally do it. You need a lot of grease though to fill this cavity before it gets to the bearings. And we put we we fill all these. We re repack them. They're brand new, but we pull these covers off all the bearings and re repack them with grease, good grease. Because nowadays, I don't care where you get your bearings from, they're not as full as they should be. So just pull this lip off, 
pack it with a good quality grease and then put your lips back on. We do it for the wheel bearings, for the mower and snowblower bearings. Just uh, the way of the world today, there's not enough good grease in there. So just pull one side lip off, pack it in, spin it around, pack it in a little bit more, and off you go. We've got a, a, a video on doing wheel bearing bearings, how to repack and reinstall. It's the same principle, very similar bearing. So check that video out on how to, how to pack a sealed bearing. So these are brand new bearings, and we're going to leave these sealed on both sides because there's not enough grease in here that would ever hit this. So I'm going to guess it probably didn't get greased very much in its life. And you'll get a lot of life out of these if they're packed full of grease to start with. And the, the, the seal actually helps keep contaminants and stuff out. So unless you're greasing these on a real regular basis, there's really not a lot of advantage uh, for this uh, setup to, to pull the seal and leave it open. You'll get more than enough life out of this. All right, so that, that's the new bearing. So what we usually do, depending on how clean the grease is or not, it doesn't really matter since we're using the sealed bearings. You can clean out the old grease out of here if you want. If you're gonna going to leave one side of the seal off, I would definitely recommend pulling the old grease out of there if it doesn't look new and healthy and fresh. If it's hard and nasty, you're going to have to clean it all out. But putting a sealed bearing in, then it doesn't matter. I'm not sure if you can see in here, but there's a snap ring right here. And that's what holds and retains your bearing. So your bearing gets pushed in there, pressed in there, and rides up against that snap ring so it doesn't go any further. So when they bottom out, you don't want to beat the hell out of them because you'll bend the snap ring and it could come out of the groove and the bearing will go in too far. And that's what this piece of pipe is kind of kind of a backup. Or when you're when you're tightening your spindle and everything together, it, it keeps the bearings separated the right distance in between them. And it keeps too much pressure on that snap ring. It keeps the pressure off if you're tightening it up too much. All right, so since we flipped that over, like I said, you got to hit from the opposite side. Now we'll knock this other bearing out. Usually they come out pretty easy. You might have to hit them a few times. Just keep working your way around opposites. Out it goes. All right, so this snap ring in here is kind of beat up and banged up. We're gonna replace that on this housing. There's a groove in there. You just want to take a pick if you can. Just clean that groove out. Make sure it's not damaged. And then set your new snap ring in. Careful, these things are under a lot of pressure. They get let loose, you'll know it. And you want to set it in that groove that you were in. And then you could take a screwdriver or or something and just spin it around a little bit so you know it's seated in that groove if it'll go sometimes they're under too much pressure and then walk your screwdriver around and make sure you can't push it down or up for that matter from the other side visually see it in that groove right there now it's seated in there it wasn't completely in on one side you don't have snap ring pliers sometimes you could take a pair of needle nose in those two holes some guys will get creative with other things but you can we've got good snap ring pliers we've got cheap ones they all kind of work all right um some are definitely better than others i would i stay away from the ones with the changeable uh, jaws they're just kind of flimsy and cheap i like the ones that are their own size their own style 90 degrees and straight on these are just a, a fairly inexpensive brand I wanted to try them out, and I'm actually very impressed with them. I've got some icons and, and some nitpicks and stuff on the truck that are real nice. But these work pros do a hell of a job for what they are. I want to say the set was less than 30 bucks when I bought it. It comes with the uh, inner and outer straight, and I think 90 or 45s. All right. So put the new one in. I usually just take a little bit of grease. It helps with going in, and it also helps any kind of corrosion prevention. And since they're sealed, their bearings the same, both sides, it doesn't matter. The important part is you don't beat the bearing up too bad going in. So you can use a lot of different things to, to push the bearing in. So we, this is just a press mandrel. This will work. You can use a socket. 
a piece of pipe. The key is that you're, whatever you're using is pushing on the outside of this bearing here, not on the rubber seal because you'll damage the bearing and preferably not on the inner race too much. You want to be on this outer race. They should go in pretty easy. If, if yours is, is buggered up in here or rusty or whatever, you're going to have to clean it up with some memory cloth or what have you. You can hit them in with a hammer too. A dead blow is kind of ideal if you're not going to use a socket or something like this. But if you get a socket that fits the outside, that works. We have these here. They work too. And it just puts a nice even force on it. Doing the hammer, you're not going to be exactly even. You're going to be hitting one side, and you're going to have to keep working your way around. But same thing, opposite. So you go 12, 6, 3, 9, keep working your way around. This way here, you're more of an even even force going in. You want to make sure when you set it in here, though, that it's setting, setting straight and not crooked. Just like that. And now I'm just going to turn this over. It's going to be on the inner race, but this, there's not a lot of force here right now. Just tap it lightly. And you'll hear it and feel it bottom out against that snap ring. Flip it over. Make sure you're clean in here. There's no, no rust or anything. Make sure you're... Your housing's smooth, the bearing's gonna ride in there. Again, the important part, this grease is good, otherwise I'd worry about getting really clean, but I'm not worried about it. You gotta make sure your spacer goes in here first. Take a little bit of that grease, put it on the outside of this bearing, like we did before. You want this in the center, but it's not absolutely critical dead center right now. Because right now it's essentially just a spacer and it's going to be kind of loose in there. If you're worried about it, you can hold it from the bottom with something. But like I said, right now it's not that critical. Um, put this one in with a hammer just to show you kind of how we do it. So a little bit of bearing up so it slides in. If you don't have a big socket or something to put it in, I'll show you how we do it. You're better off using a dead blow so you don't damage the metal. Less chance of it. Again, the key is getting this sitting in here straight to start with. And you want to hit even force. If you can hit it in the center to start with, that's okay. But you just don't want to damage this seal. So that's why you kind of just got to watch where you're hitting. And then just pay attention every, every time you hit it. You want to go opposite where you were. So right now it's kind of cocked this way. I want to hit this side. Now it's cocked this way, you're going to hit up top or down below. And just keep working your way around. This should go pretty nice. Again, take your smaller socket in here if you want. And once you get to this point, you want to make sure that spacer is lined up. That, that's where you want to be lined up with the spacer. We're going to take this, bottom it out on that snap ring. And it is. That's it. Doesn't want to go anymore. And that's all there is to replacing these bearings. I'm not going to take you through the other two because it's the same exact thing. Make sure they're sitting in their level, even around all four sides. That spacer in there should be able to walk around with your finger or a screwdriver. These shouldn't be pushing on it so it can't walk around. That's what the snap rings, they keep it centered where it needs to be, the bearings. All right, so now we're going to install the hubs that we assembled with the new bearings. A couple things you want to make sure. Your hole isn't buggered up from knocking out your, your bearings. If it is, clean it up. Absolutely make sure where the hubs sit is absolutely clean. Otherwise, you'll have a bad blade vibration. It could get dangerous also. We always find it helps if you spray the, the face of the, the deck where the bearings bearing flange goes. Next time you have to pull them off, they, they tend not to be rusted shot, uh, solid. They just spray these down. WD-40, penetrating oil, motor oil. You're also going to want to do the face of your hubs. Make sure these are all scraped down. Any paint, any garbage, whatever. You want these to be even and level. 
And the other thing you want to make sure you, that this doesn't get banged up too bad when you're knocking through mushrooms. Because it should almost drop right in here with this a real, real slight toler uh, tolerance, close tolerance fit. And spray the back side of these. You're going to want to kind of line your holes up too for your bolts. Although once these are in, they're kind of tough spinning. You can use whatever you got to do that. A couple of alignment punches work pretty good usually. Get you close. And then it'll be the same deal beating on these. You want to go as easy as you can. You can use a, a, a bigger socket and uh if you need to and that way you're you're pushing on the cast here but just don't go too crazy because you'll break it you don't necessarily need to drive them in by the bearings but these should go in pretty easy you may have to tap around the outer side here just remember it's cast but they start going crooked you got to straighten them out again you always want to tap opposite sure it's all the way down around the holes are close enough lined up this one actually will spin a little bit sometimes once they're in there they don't that's why you need the alignment punches you don't want to do that for for all four and then again while while you're on the underside spray these holes down with some kind of something to protect the threads so next time you take it apart or somebody takes it apart they're good and then remember your bolts They've all the, got to have the lock nut on them. So what I usually do just to make life easier is sometimes these are loose like this one is once you get them in. Just start a couple bolts. That way these don't drop out as you're flipping the deck over to tighten them up. Or you can tighten them from underneath. However you, however you choose. But just important to keep your, your lock washers on there if, if it had them to start with. And then just do that for the rest of them. And then we'll flip it over and go from there. Okay, one thing to note, if you are going to grease these, when you're putting the hubs up, have the grease fitting facing a direction you can get to. So back is not the easiest, either forward or towards the, the chute. Just a heads up. If you're not greasing them, then it doesn't matter. When you tighten these up, again, you want to go cross pattern away from each other so they tighten up even. Uh, there's probably a torque spec, but just use your head. You don't want them very loose by any means, but you don't want to snap the bolts off, but they need to be good and tight. You watch them pull them through, that's why you do it across from each other because if you do one side, you have a chance either snapping them or not coming through the hole straight. That part's done. So next we're going to work on the, the idler and then you're going to install, install the spindles and we'll show you how to do that. So we got a new bracket for the idler pulley assembly. Put a new carriage bolt in. There's a shoulder on these pulleys. I don't know if you can see it, but this side's either flush or a little bit countersunk. This side's protruding. That can go down there. If you got a longer bolt, you can put a small wash underneath if you want, but don't necessarily have to because the shoulder is your spacing. And then you just assemble it like that. You're tightening up on the bearing here too, so you want to get it snug, but you don't want to go too crazy and do any damage. Now 
All right. This old bolt down here, it's in decent shape, so we're not going to replace that one. The hole's good down there. But what we did do is this washer and bushing were shot, or a hole right through it, or a groove into it. I didn't have a new one, but we, we ended up making one. We put a, we had a piece of bronze oil light that's actually got uh, oil embedded into it and cut it down to size. Pushed it into the washer, and this will this will work just fine. It's essentially what they used anyways. We just made one. So if you do end up having to cut one, just stick the, the flat part that's factory cut down below so this all sits flush. on the bottom of the washer and it's in there where it needs to be and what that does is allows this to pivot as you tighten this down so you want to make sure this height here is the thickness of of this so we're going to grind this down a little bit i need to get it installed here to get a good idea so when you're tightening down it's tightening on here but it doesn't stop it from pivoting so if you do have to make a bushing, make sure it's the same thickness as this bracket. That's all. All right, so we got our piece ground down with the bushing. And when I say flush, you got to account for the washer too. So we're going to put this in. Factory cut down below if you got one. All right. So now when it's on there with the washer, it's flush. You don't want to do it just the thickness of the bracket, but you want the bracket and the washer. Just to be clear on that. Then what we're going to do is put another washer in there just to kind of sandwich it and let it work as a um, kind of like a, a bearing or a bushing. So you're going to want, want to put that in there and that's going to keep the bushing in place. And also act kind of like a bearing as this as this pivots. We're going to use a new new nut and a lock washer. So then the lock washer is going to keep the tension on there. So this can still pivot freely as you tighten it up. A little bit of lube on everything so it all comes apart nice next time if you got to do it again. And you want tension on here, but you don't need to sock it right up. Because remember, everything is in there with the spacer acting like a bearing. Okay. So you that that little bit there is actually almost a little too tight. This has to pivot. Maybe if you work it back and forth, it'll be enough. Yep, there you go. The other thing you can use here if you want is a uh, nylon knock, lock nut. The user don't back off. Because you got the tension here with the, the lock washer, and that, this is actually bottomed out on that bushing, so this is just rotating in that bushing. But you see, there's no play in this like the original one. You can move it with one hand, one finger, but it's got a little resistance, that's kind of what you want. Put a little grease, we had some on the washer, but you can put a little bit of grease or a little lube up here if you want. And just work that back and forth. When I, when you, whenever you service a deck, just put a little bit in there and it'll stay as you're riding because this bracket's riding on that washer where that spacer's sitting in between. So the other thing with this idle pulley is somebody uh, must have had an aftermarket spring in at one time or something. They put this whole nut and bolt set up here. If you got the correct spring. But you know, this hole's all wallowed out. Maybe that's why they did that. It looks like probably why they did that. So we're going to have to see once we get the belt on if we need to do something different. To figure out where to hook the spring up to. Because that's all wallowed out. And I think it's not going to work correctly. But we'll figure it out once the belt's on there. So now we're going to put the spindles in. Here's a brand new center one. Here's our old used ones and the outer ones. The pulleys weren't in bad shape. The spindles aren't in bad shape. The customer didn't want to replace those. The center one had to... If you can see the difference in the height, and again, these drop in from the top, so just recommend a little bit of grease on them. Keeps the rust off them, helps slide, helps them slide in, and then where the bearings ride, hopefully 
they won't seize up to it. They shouldn't, especially if your bearings, you don't run them until they're shot. The other one, we had to cut off the center center spindle. It was welded itself for the inside race right to it. These are going through your spacer and your new bearings. You got to make sure that spacer is kind of lined up where, where it's all one shot here. And remember these spacers are on the bottom between your pulley and your, your bearing. Very important you put these back on. Now you gotta remember if you're doing this up on a bench or something, make sure this is propped up so those shafts go all the way through and you're not banging on your bench when you're trying to seat these. They should drop right in. If they're not dropping in with a little tapping, Something's out of alignment, out of whack. So this one's all the way in. See that spacer rises you up and above these bolt heads. So that's very important it's in there. So these are going a little harder than this one because obviously this is brand new. You can clean those spindles up if you want a little bit with some sandpaper and they'll go a little easier. Like I said, you got to make sure your spacer that's in between those bearings. The pulley looks like somebody pried up at one time, but... It's all rebuilt now. Good as new. Alright, so the top side work is done. You put your bolts on to lock your hubs on, your auto brackets on if you rebuilt that. These are in here. As you flip this, if they're real loose, be careful they might come out, but there should be enough, enough interference in there that they won't. So this is what the bottoms look like. This one's not down as much, but it was up against that snap ring. I made sure it sat in there, it was seated in there. Um, all right, now... You're going to take your, we're putting a new blade adapter on the center spindle, doing everything new. You're going to take your blade adapter and put it on. So this has got the steps. So that actually goes and sits inside this housing a little bit. And then that goes on your, on your spindle. Like that. And then you're going to put your dust shield on. Like that. And then all these blades are the same size on this deck. You put your brand new blade on, and the side that cuts is on the bottom, that is upside down. So your, your wings that do the lifting are facing towards the deck. Make sure the bolts are putting back in and the threads are good and clean. Use a flange bolt. We're going to use a new lock washer, and then you got these big washers. These got to be pretty tight. You don't want these blades going flying, but you don't want to break the bolt off inside that spindle. Use your head. If you're using a hand tool, you're going to have to wedge this blade so it doesn't spin as you're tightening it up. That's how they should spin. A little bit of resistance because you got a new bearing, a new grease. If they just keep spinning and spinning and spinning, that means your bearings are shot. If they don't spin at all, it means your bearings are shot. You'll notice over on here, this bearing is actually sitting all the way down where it's supposed to be. But there was some twine up here and maybe some metal wire and it wore this housing down a little bit. But there's enough of a lip in there that, that this lip here is still going to catch in there and center it and, and ride where it needs to ride. So that'll be all right. And these decks aren't timed, but I always put these 90 degrees from each other. So this one will be up and down. These two will be out across. It doesn't really matter, but that's what we do. Don't forget your dust cover. That goes on before the blade. So as you remember, this other one had play up and down. The old one, there's zero play here at all. I'm pulling up the deck. Thing with these 
they all spin doing what they're supposed to do. So we're going to put the belt on the other side and, and button that part up and, and go that route and address that uh, idler situation some more. All right, this spring could be a pain. There's a few different ways people do it. New belt, new spring is really a pain. But you can pry on the idler pulley here and then take an alignment bar and try to walk this on. Sometimes you might need to take a pair of needle nose to get it to go where you want it. This bar is not helping in the way. The bar out makes your life easier, but pry on the idler pulley here and take an alignment bar and try to walk this on. Sometimes you might need to take a pair of needle nose to get it to go where you want it. bar out makes your life easier but there it is it just doesn't wobble around like the other one did I'm not going to destroy the belts everything's going to stay in alignment this hole is wall wallered out a little bit from the previous setup they had but it'll, it'll work it'll serve the purpose but that's about right everything does its thing and that deck's ready to go basically Thanks for watching.